Looks like the circus left town, but the clowns are still here. Titus does not look particularly happy to see you. Yeah. Let's see. I just found a bullet in the hanged man's head. A bullet, you say? That's mighty curious. Indeed. Mighty. How did it get there? Well, there are so many bullets in the world, and so many heads. <sighs> I guess it's only logical. At some point, one of them bullets had to end up in one of them heads. Well, you know... <sighs> It's bound to happen again, you know? Just statistically speaking, of course. Sire, it would be an event most dramatic if you were to produce the bullet and dangle it before their very eyes. I'm gonna ask you again. Why was this in the victim's head? Wow! He's got it in a real evidence bag and all! Why don't you go home and log it into evidence? These men have told you what happened. I think the hanging was a cover-up for the shooting. You know what I think? I think he was shot in the head as a kid. And his brain grew around the bullet. Around the bullet, man. That's a good one. All the goofing around is to avoid lying. It's a technique. They're only pretending to enjoy this. Beneath the act, they don't like you knowing this. Did you guys shoot him? Shit! I probably did shoot him. I was drunk last night. You guys know me when I'm drunk. Yeah, Glenn likes to shoot his guns when he's drunk. Better hope he stays sober. No, he meant before he was hanged. Did you shoot him before you hanged him? Before? After? During? This is getting ridiculous. They told you what happened. Stop wasting your time. Don't worry, we'll figure this out sooner or later. Never been worried in my life. He crosses his hairy arms, having forgotten his beer for a moment. It's not like you blew it wide open, but there's a little crack in there, somewhere. I found eight sets of footprints, but only seven of you. Where's the eighth hardy boy? What are you talking about, madman? There's no eighth hardy boy, there's seven of us and we're all here. Or what? You want to be the eighth hardy boy? We ain't hiring. Actually, boss, we've been talking and we think she could maybe... This person wants to hire. He really respects her. You shouldn't have said that, Glenn. She? So there's an eighth Hardy, and it's a Hardy girl. Who might it be? Elizabeth? The gardener? You really fucked up there, didn't you, Glenn? That was quite the bungle. Shut the fuck up, Glenn! I do the talking here. Now what the fuck do you want, cop? Ooh, Glenn. Ooh, ah, you hate to see it. It has to be good, if he won't let you pursue it. Looks like the lieutenant thinks so, too. So, let me get this straight. There is an ace hardy boy. It's a she, and you don't like us talking about her? That's right. We're not talking about this. This is a private hardy boy's matter. Nothing to do with your shit. M, you're not cops here. Don't go digging around if you don't want a bullet in the back of your head. I'm watching you. Good. We are all watching each other. Officer, your question. There's no point in pushing it further, he thinks. This is already a victory. We'll learn more about this 8th Hardy sooner or later. Guess what? I've connected you to the local drug trade. Like hell you have. There is no local drug trade. This place is as clean as a rifle. Go back to Jamrock and ask the local junkies how clean your streets are in Precinct 41 Kilos. We'll do that. In the meantime, did you know that there's an abandoned lorry at the intersection that was used to move raw ingredients for drugs from Terminal B to Jamrock? The person driving it was present at the hanging. It was one of you. We've connected the footprint. Detective. Do you want to deliver the coup de grace? The thought forms in your head, like a lightning strike branching in the sky. No, the thunder is his. Leave it to the lieutenant. No, no, do the honors. You've earned it, lieutenant. Thank you. You're right, Titus. There is no local drug trade, because it's all controlled by you. You're the drug trade. That's a mighty interesting theory. 
I guess that's what you would need to do, theoretically. A big, strong, state-run monopoly would outcompete the runs on the street. Yeah, man. Theoretically, that's what you would do. To get rid of the gangs, the dealers, even some of the junkies. You would need good, trustworthy people to take their place, of course. Hardy men to run such a monopoly. For the good of the community, of course. This is disgusting. You're admitting to profiting off the poisoning of your own people. Boo fucking who? People will always be taking drugs. Might as well do it clean and organized. Yeah, that's what the labor movement is all about. Clean and organized. And the Hardy Boys are running it. Theoretically, of course. We're just talking politics here. My answer to your drug accusation is... How dare you? Go fuck yourself. Not quite yet, Mr. Hardy. There were eight sets of prints on the crime scene. There are only seven Hardy boys here. The eighth Hardy, the one who's missing. She runs the thing, right? My answer is... Fuck off. Mind your own business. There is no eighth Hardy. I run this goddamn scene. Finally, you got something out of him. This could prove useful in the future. And here we go. Back to the usual. I know, I know. Fatty walked on all fours. He's so fucking fat, he left two sets of footprints. <laughs> the fuck is wrong with you? Despite everything, the little man is quick on his feet. Go fuck your mom, Dennis. That's more like it, boys. You heard him. It was Angus on all fours. Anything else you need to know? Well, let's talk about the hanging again. Again. Just get the dead guy's autograph, since you're his biggest fan. <laughs> Alright, nothing else. About. Never mind. Alright, well, that was productive. Now, let's go open the door and go to Everard. But we gotta go all the way around. I do, I do quite desperately just want to investigate the haunting, but, you know, we'll do it in order. It's, it's a side thing. We should try and be productive during the day. Oh, was that? The spread pattern of these bullet holes makes your chest ache. Your breath grows heavier. Examine closer. You peer into the faded marks in the stone. They peer back like an endless row of tiny black holes. Sweat starts trickling down your brow. Oh. You feel something in your chest. An unnatural pressure. It's spreading to your left arm. Your jaw. The end of the world is here. Don't think this is a sign of anything other than your heart failing. Try to remain conscious. All you feel is pain and weakness. You have to surrender now. We all do. It gets so dark. You don't even see her face. Like you always thought you would. You only see pain and fear. Cop suffers final heart attack. A detective lieutenant of the RCM passed away yesterday. His death, though abrupt, did not come as a surprise to those who knew him. He was the heaviest drinker I'd ever met. Captain Ptolemy Price, the deceased superior officer, commented. That ain't easy on the ticker. He loved his liquor, sure, said Detective Chester McLean, friend and colleague. But I think before he ever had a heart attack, his heart was broken. According to an official statement given by the RCM, the officer was on the brink of solving a murder case. Well, I didn't expect that to happen right there, you know? No saves after that point, huh? Gotta do... All that again, huh? How was I to know examining bullet holes was going to inflict physical pain?
Sick. Awesome. Well, you know. <sighs> All right. We're back at it. I did everything the same, I think. And it's time... I even bought some healing items. It's time to examine this again. The spread pattern of these bullet holes. You peer into the faded mo The chest feels tight. Looking at this. It's closing in. Caving in. Ever tighter. Your breathing grows even heavier. You okay, there? The lieutenant's sudden voice cuts like a blade, bringing you out of your stupor. Man, I started feeling really bad for a second. Might be the after effects of your past escapade. What are you looking at? What's with all these bullet holes? I've seen a lot of them around. Remnants from the revolution. These are over half a century old. Hmm. Is there something we should do about these? No, we are not constructors and renovators. And these bullet holes do not warrant an investigation. Okay, but what can you tell me about the revolution? Not much. I don't have a fresh perspective on it. Should we go? Fair enough. Door. This must be it. The basement door is weather-worn. The copper nails holding the upholstery in place have turned green from sea air. And there's a knocker shaped like a lion's head. Press your ear against the door. The leather upholstery is worn and rough against your jaw. You don't hear any movement. In fact, it's oddly silent in the yard around you. No birds chirp. Carefully knock. You knock silently. The upholstery muffles the sound. No response comes from the apartment. I guess no one is in. Lieutenant, what's your opinion of this task we are undertaking? Let's be honest. This isn't what I joined the RCM for. But every day tells you something new about yourself. Apparently, working with the local union boss to get info on an investigation is not something I'm squeamish about. So you don't mind if I unlock the door? I mind that the local thug is using the RCM for his busy work. But if this gets us to the bottom of this hanging, then I'm willing to look over it. On the other hand, we could just leave and tell Evrat we opened the door. No one seems to be tailing us to see if we actually did it. Lie to Evrat? That's also an option? Yes. Presenting a fabrication is known to get results here and there. You took this task. You make the call. The door is right here. You can just open it and be done with this. Besides, if you never open it, you're never going to find out what's behind the door. Excellent point, Inland Empire. And I very much like, would like to know. Use the key. You try to be as silent as you can. It takes a bit of rattling of the handle to loosen the bolt. Finally, the door unlocks with a small clack. Thoughts race through your head. The sound of the key turning still echoes in the yard. Hopefully no one heard. Only curiosity could account for stepping over that threshold. Maybe there's treasure in there. A white alligator. A fountain of quicksilver. Those both seem realistic. There might be important information in the apartment. I mean, there might. As you hold the open door, you can feel the air moving. A little draft. A whistle. <laughs> Let's be honest, we were always going to go inside. What you got in here? You got any goodies? This is... Bah, we have so much of this, can I please have some more health ones? A small suitcase full of clothes. Guests are staying over? Oh, thank you! <laughs> How kind! A book titled The Hidden World of Walking Sticks lies open. You can almost feel the warmth of the red sun on the flag. This is the flag of Rivershaw, the suzerainty. What's with the sun? This isn't just one sun, but there are little suns dancing around the big sun. This is the sevenfold sun miracle. What's the sevenfold sun miracle? It's an optical atmospheric anomaly the first settlers saw. Happens in cold weather. Six small suns around the big one. This complex halo phenomena is how old Revachol got its flag. It is but one of the many strange optic atmospheric phenomena of this wondrous archipelago. You're sure you once saw sun dogs in your youth and blue flares. Lieutenant, the old flag of the suzerain. Mm-hmm. The tenant is an old-fashioned guy. Bow before the flag. The lieutenant does not bow to the flag. It accepts your salute with quiet dignity. 
Mm hmm. Whoever lives here admires fair haired fantasy heroes with big muscles. Who doesn't, though? Oh. Oh. Is this a jacket or a shirt? It's a shirt. I will take one logic. Will I take that? Over one shivers? I will take the one logic. A row of mugs sits on the shelf. Each one depicts a human figure. A dark-skinned woman grinning amidst mysterious symbols. A broad-shouldered man shoveling potatoes and others. Hmm. Have we found the owner of the mug? A little ring. Though cheerful, the images on the ceramic make you vaguely uncomfortable. There's something disdainful in the way the curves and lines of the bodies were drawn. The images betray a lack of interest in human beings. They are merely unflattering caricatures. What do I mean, uncomfortable? The owner of these mugs doesn't like people of other ethnicities very much. Typical asshole. This person is unhappy. The lieutenant picks up one of the mugs, then puts it back down with a look of disdain. I'm beginning to feel better about breaking into this man's apartment. So true. Whip out your yellow mug and compare. Yes, your broken mug friend would feel very much at home here. The same humor, the same mocking lines. There's the missing tin soldier. Whoever lives here might have used the whirling's container to dump his trash. And now they've drawn the ire of the Union. The plot thickens, as they say. An interesting little clue. Let's see where this goes. Clues have a way of magically connecting to other clues down the road. Perhaps you should break into apartments more often. You know, Inland Empire, you raise an interesting proposition. Do you really think it's the same person who put the dead man's clothes in the trash? Who knows? I'm not expecting too much from this clothes in the trash lead either way. It might turn out to be some random local matter, but still, a nice coincidence. You could ask Everard who this person is once you're done here. Move on. The smell of disinfectant in the room smells like chemicals. Do I have any other thoughts I was interested in? Um, right, this is the sorry cop. Some kind of superstar. White morning. Did we look at this? You see yourself from above. You've passed out on the blue tiles of the hostel room floor. Even from this distance, you can see your eyelids flutter. At the mention of what? A great white object, letting out its sweet smell, like a lily of the valley. The little man's forgotten its name, but he still remembers the feeling. And look, he moves. The feeling animates him. He instinctively reaches out for his feeling's best friend, a bottle of Commodore Red. He puts on his disco clothes and gets smaller and smaller. Did we do this? What is the one I wanted to get rid of? It's not that, right? Yeah, it was this I wanted to get rid of, which is a shame. All right. Well, we should just unlock like all of these probably anyway. White morning. Let's see what this little man getting smaller and smaller is about. I'm, I have this strange feeling I've done it before, but I, I can't recall. It all blurs together. All right, let's... I, I've said we were going to go talk to Everard after doing that, but I want to inspect the haunted building, okay? Look, we're going to inspect the haunted building, actually. Because, you know... You know me, I love me some supernatural phenomenon, as as they say in Revishall, apparently. Hey, do you have anything to say about me opening the door, actually? You broke down the back door, the wards, the door. It's all gone now. Dark psychic energy leeching onto my shop. Sometimes it's necessary to resort to extreme measures. I suppose it's all over now. I guess there's no escape. What are you talking about? It's just a door. Just a door? This place is cursed, Detective. They don't call it the doomed commercial area for nothing. Just look at the sheer amount of companies that have failed in this house. I think that might be more to do with this place being a piece of shit, to be honest, but... I hope you're happy now. Happy that you've ruined everything. 
Now that you've broken the door, the curse is coming to get me as well. She closes her eyes and starts mumbling something to her pendant. Host almighty, she prays. Guard me and my honest business venture from the curse that lurks behind the door. Blessed be your name. Oh, sorry, I didn't know about the curse. Of course you didn't. You're nothing but a policeman. Hmm. All right. You know what? I'm willing to let you investigate the doomed commercial area. We are set on the path. There's little else to do. So true. Her facade has dropped. Now you see the curiosity behind hmm. the But before we go on, tell me. Did you encounter the malignant entity? Of course. The entity. I didn't see her, but I sensed her presence. You did? Then it has to be true. I've suspected that this woman-shaped energy must be connected to the curse ever since I first saw her. Did you see that she lives inside the chimney? Chimney. The passage between heaven and hell. Of course. It all makes sense now. Yes. That chimney is part of the building's central furnace, and it's enormous. She has barricaded herself behind some metal security curtains. God knows what she's doing there. Some unnatural magic, I assume. You should go find the entity and ask what happened to all the companies in the building. And do return to me after you've talked to it. I'm quite anxious to know what she has to say about the curse. I had a few more questions about the curse. Okay, but please, only a few questions. You wouldn't want to disturb the spirits. How does this curse manifest? The curse is so much worse than you could imagine. Oh God. It's a disease, <clears throat> eating at the very foundation. A shiver runs through the woman as she looks around the dimly lit store. It's the curse of financial distress. Oh God. Of ruin and bankruptcy. I believe I have this curse. Didn't, didn't that curtain just move? Inland Empire, are you fucking with me right now? Hmm. Ah, Annette mentioned the previous tenants have experienced some financial trouble. It's not just that, officer. We're dealing with something supernatural here. It's the cacodemons feeding off bad business practices and disappointing income statements. Cacodemons? You mean the little floating heads? There's something wrong with this building, I can tell you. Ever since I arrived, I've sensed an eerie lingering presence. As if I was unwanted here. Sounds familiar. Strange. I feel unwanted too. What does it mean? Truly so? Perhaps the dark energies are leeching off you. You shouldn't stay in the store too long. It may be dangerous. Why didn't you just tell me about right away about the curse? It's not good to talk about the curse. Not in detail. The negativism. It's dangerous. Talking about the void wraiths angers them. Hmm. True. This is known to be the case. Well, void wraiths. You have new words. I don't know that I do, but whatever conceptualization. Have you sought help from anyone? Yes. I've contacted numerous parapsychologists and even a pair of Simonese mediators. They provided me with the wards. She nods towards the strange cage-like trinket on the curtains. The wards help to keep the doom at bay and protect us against the darkness that lies further in the building. Even though now I fear it's not enough. Is your pendant part of the wards as well? No, it's a special Hymian amulet, blessed by desert pygmy shamans, with a spell of compulsion. It's to compel people to buy books. I don't like that you said shamans. Like, that just kind of upset me on a personal level. <laughs> Who says shamans? So it'll turn out that's actually the correct way to say it. There are numerous spells cast throughout the store. I had the books anointed with a different inducement spell, for example. It's a what? guaranteed to boost sales. 15%. Oh, inducement. I thought she said inducement. I was like, what does that mean? Doesn't seem like the spell is working. There are no customers around except you. Honestly, it seems like this pendant thing is a scam. You could be doing so much more. Sir, I am well educated in the commercial and esoteric arts. I know what to do and what to avoid. Hmm. Maybe you should try to reconceptualize your business. Martinez doesn't look like the best place for a bookshop. You're right. A bookstore wasn't even my original plan. I actually wanted to sell esoteric paraphernalia to help to balance out this neighborhood's dark energies. Great idea. What happened? My husband suggested otherwise. He said it's less 
stupid. Yeah. More appropriate. Cultured and all that. Disgusting. But being cultured doesn't offer any protection against the curse, does it? Maybe I shouldn't have listened to him after all. Hmm. Remember to stay hydrated, by the way. What about the wards on the back door? Are they Simonese as well? Yes. The Simonese are very crafty, and their wards are extremely powerful. Lesser wards simply won't do here. I had other questions. Woman. That is to say, I'm leaving, actually. Hold on. All right. It's time to investigate this curse. Finally, what we all came here for. Sand is dripping from a punch bag. Oh fuck, $13, almost 14. Poster says, Citis Fortis, the rest is worn off. Smells like leather and sweat. Worn out wall bars, they look unsafe. A barbell lies on the floor. The color has worn off its weight plates. It's 60 kilograms. Your triceps hum at the sight of these weights. Show the world what kind of beast it's dealing with. Lift them. Side, side point. Don't we look so fucking cool, though? There are no collars on the barbell. This is a safety hazard. Why does it feel so familiar? Is this, is this familiar because I'm a weightlifter? No. It's not that. It's the stale smell of rubber. The squeaky sound of sneakers. Your bruised knee against the mat. And a whistle. Then the feeling is gone. It's just a memory. A memory from another life. When you were young and fit. Look, Kim. It's a trap. There are no collars on the barbell. You're right. The weight may fall off. Better not touch it then. What kind? of a bastard would just remove the collars. It should be a felony. It would be a violation of EPIS safety regulations if the gym was still operating, but it isn't. No one's supposed to come here anymore. Let's not do that. That's almost certainly going to hurt us. The hallway is blocked by old window panes and debris. Looks like the remains of the 24-hour window repair shop. I just remembered we were meant to equip the flashlight for this. Was there anything in here that it would have seen with the flashlight? Guess not. Oh, he points it at the cursor! Oh, let's go! Oh, yeah. Wild animals stare at you in the dark, stuffed and mounted. A large demijohn full of strange liquid. A what? Airship rotors covered in spider webs. They remind you of blades. Hmm. A naked mannequin torso. A strange yellow color. Huh. Three dollars. Am I being abducted? Can you hear this soundtrack? Blue velvet, soft to the touch, moth bitten. Oh fuck, let's go. But where are the clothes it used to display? This appears to be some kind of machine with a cube-shaped heart Fuck. and a wired framework. The keyboard has a rectangular on-off button. A piece of paper still hangs from the printer. The radio computer. Just sitting here without anyone inside. You sound surprised and a bit cautious. Fucking, this still works during the dialogue. What, what a day. Do you like how it goes straight through this panel also? What he means is that these things cost money. Why would anyone just leave it behind? Do you think I should turn it on? We have one of these down at the station, but I never really learned how to use it. Turn it on. The machine lights up like some prehistoric animal stirring from its slumber, revealing fluorescent play and print keys on the keyboard. The hatch on the machine's central compartment is wide open. What the fuck was that noise? Look inside the compartment. It's empty like a beehive without its brood. Some cables have been left dangling, disconnected. Dude, the aliens are coming, Jesus Christ. This is where the memory should go. Press play. Nothing happens. Print. Nothing happens. Play. Nothing happens. Okay. To be fair, it probably doesn't have, you know, much power. Scribbled across a notebook. Developers of the most advanced RPG in the universe. My, my. 
This old fireplace is covered in lines drawn in blue and red marker. The mesh spreading over the stone like blood vessels on alabaster skin. It looks ghostly and strangely ancient. Damn, like blood vessels on alabaster skin? What a, what a good sentence. A diagram for summoning some time-forgotten being. The symbols seem very esoteric. Hmm. The whole thing resembles Cadran mosaic tiles. Very pathetic. Hmm. Hold on. How do I know what Kedran mosaic t mosaic tiles are supposed to look like? History classes. Students with their textbooks open, studying the roots of our civilization. Those aquarelle blue tiles looked beautiful in the sun. What am I looking at? Radio frequencies, it seems. UKV one two three point six. UKV one two three point seven. UKV one two three point nine. Some written notes too. Sparse. And cryptic. Radio frequencies for what? Unclear. It looks like a cardiovascular system split into veins and capillaries. Very advanced. Of course. The anatomy of the curse. Perhaps. The web is comprised of radio stations, all lead back to one red heart, titled the Game Master Frequency. A note says this one can listen in on any station it wants. Who's the Game Master? Someone very important. A conductor for the hundreds of story threads that pass through the Game Master's frequency. If it's a game, who's playing? Whoever decides to call in to a call-in station, it looks like. A list of names under the stations suggests people across six Isolas would be playing. Muindi, Insulinda, Kotla, Grad, Samara, and even Ilmara. All of this is gone, left unrealized. There's no way a little basement studio working here could pull anything like this off. My god. It's as if the less money they had, the more ambitious their project became. Who can't relate to such a thing? Why do you say that? The schedule. I know Doom when I see it. The company was running out of funding. What else? Nothing. It's just lines on marble. An echo from times long gone. No one has used the fireplace in ages. Hmm, we're looking at the remnants of broken dreams. Very relatable. Your flashlight slides over an old green chalkboard covered in scribbles, sketches, and schemes like some ancient cave mural. Some of the writing has faded with age, but you can still make out sections here and there. Photos and drawings have been pinned to the board. Drawings. These lithe, pointy-eared creatures appear to be different types of welkins. You make out autumnal candle welkins, casting wax-based magic. Translucent welkins, with organs shining under their skin. And even ether welkins, hailing from the vast emptiness of sidereal space. Bro. <laughs> you sure are saying a lot of things. Who are all those creatures? Fantasies of a tortured, feverish mind? You should adopt one of those Wilkins as your persona. No longer a mere man, but a Wilkin. Drama that sounds exceptionally fun. One of the Wilkins, towering among the rest, appears to be different, however. Examine the Wilkin. This is important. It's Vara Hamira, a high Wilkin. His face white and scarred like cracked marble. This is clearly a Welkin supremacist. The note says, all non-Welkin races will be purged. Fucking Welkins. The Haldor, the Twarg, the humans, and even headless men. All of them purged. Imagine a world filled only with Welkin. Green Welkin, Dread Welkin, and the High Welkin to rule them all. An inordinate amount of time has gone into drawing these little Welkin creatures. Hmm. One of them is a Welkin supremacist. Mm-hmm. Political commentary. That one has a great beard, too. <laughs> Why would anyone spend so much time on this? Some people really like building a world, I think. Even if it's just for a game. Very relatable. Who are these creatures? Who drew them? Are they real? I have so many questions. This looks like concept art for a project. It's not really real. This has been educational. Let's move on from the Welkins. Just look at those details. So much effort. And for what? 
all gone. You're depressing me? Please stop. Inspect the photos. The photo collage depicts barren, icy landscapes wrapped in perpetual night. You see permafrost and glacial landforms, dead trees grown in under the snow. Entire oceans have been frozen from shore to shore. There are pictures of settlements on dried up riverbeds, abandoned in a storm. Animal corpses in the dark, carcasses and bones. You see primitive oil rigs built into glaciers, Boreal Dvorg, yurts under the snow, great mammoth-like beasts of burden. Albeit dark and cold, this vision also feels cozy in its own way, like eggnog or morphine, a much needed respite from our own world. Ah yes, like eggnog or morphine. <laughs> a pinned postcard reads, the heat death scenario, a desperate fight for geothermal energy engulfs the world as Wirral becomes untethered from its sun, drifting through the universe. Oh fuck, inspect the schedule. This is a monthly calendar from the year 50. Cryptic words like Sprint, Daily Minimi, and GPI span the marker-drawn grid, the grand scheme of production and money. It looks a bit like an academic calendar, only much more brutal. What does that mean? Keep going? As time goes on, the numbers in the boxes grow rarer and rarer. The board becomes an empty snowfield in the final days. Only failure and regret dwell in this region. Looks like they didn't make it. A note in the bottom left corner of the chalkboard says, See the prod schedule filament for details. Inspect the notes. The handwriting is only partly legible, but you can still make out three slogans. Call in, tune out, we're all untethered, and heat death of the universe. The full text reads, Heat death of the universe is the new black. Another note says, the biggest advancement in role-playing systems since the 30s. Outside, a cold wind wraps the building in its bosom. Snowflakes in the wind. An old woman passes what the locals call the doomed commercial area. She tries hard not to look at the bookstore windows. It's unwise. Hmm. This place is depressing, dude. Is this Emma's atelier? Uh, sure, man. Okay. What do you think is going on with that computer, chalkboard, and fireplace? Hmm. Well, you know. It's just a failed business. The only question is, what the hell were they making? Yes, that is the question. The lieutenant takes a step back, steepling his hands. It looks like one of those popular pen and paper role-playing games. Only these people were trying to automate it, make it work on radio computers. How were they planning to do that? Through call-in stations. None of the players have to be physically present. Anyone in the world can participate in the game, as long as they have a two-way radio. Then there's the game master frequency that listens in on the smaller calling stations. I think that was supposed to coordinate the stories, functioning as a master of ceremonies of sorts. Has anyone ever done this before? Hard to imagine they have. Not to my knowledge. They make automated games in Grad, Messina, Konigstein. You know, places with industry. Ah, places that aren't poor, you mean. But I don't think anyone has attempted to create an interisolary game before. We just don't have the technology. And this was a role-playing game? Indeed. Those Welkins are a dead giveaway. Role-playing people love that stuff. The world looks like a modified version of the Wii World board game, with heat death thrown in. Super cool. Someone should give them millions of real immediately. This game is too good to be left unfinished. True, but it's looking a little done for. What do you think happened to the company? No idea. They stopped filling out the schedule on the chalkboard. Wow. Indeed. It's ambitious and untethered from reality, but... The curse got them. I see no other explanation. Ah, yes. The doom of bad business practices. The lieutenant looks around the derelict room. The pipes howl and a rat crosses the floor. Okay, let's keep moving. What a depressing room. Steel rotor blades bearing a slipstream logo. Sli skis with slipstream printed on the laminated top layer. Um... 
It's worth a lot of money. Does that go in this by any chance? Tiles on the key Insert. Still, like a smooth drawer, the filament slides into place. On the keyboard, the play key starts blinking. Play. A bar of fabric right above the keyboard starts producing a soft hum. The sound of static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. Have you stirred the ghost of the doomed commercial area from its rest? Could this be its dismembered heart beginning to flutter? Possible Inland Empire, but we're going to take the risk. The static gets louder, slowly filling up the abandoned hall, until a voice speaks out, crackling and old, cutting into the air. Good morning, Dorcas Accident en rue de Saint-Gazelaine. This is East Inflimbian Rapid Station 1. Please repeat, is this the production schedule? What's the production schedule? The filament you have inserted into the reader. You mean the glowing thing I put inside? Yes. Is that the production schedule? Yes. Good. Please repeat the password. Oh no. Password. Of course it would have a password. That's why there's a human administrator involved. You should ask her for a hint. Can you give me a hint? No. Is it my birthday? Still no. This is the police. Please open this thing. I am contractually obliged to protect the privacy of the filament holder for trust accident. Without filing a warrant with Lintel, I cannot give you access to this filament. I'm afraid we are not doing that, unless we want to wait for a month. Now, can you please repeat the password? I don't know the password. Received. I will register this login attempt. Don't worry. Passwords have a way of turning up sooner or later. Fortress accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Why did you call me a fortress accident? Fortress accident is the company on whose name the terminal you are currently using has been registered to. Do you have any other information about this company? One moment. You hear her flip through a catalog before she reads out with studious care. Fortress Accident SCA produces revolutionary interactive call-in radio games. That's what the catalog says. That's not bad. Wow, so conceptual. Hmm. And what's this that and what's that, this interactive call in radio game? Any other questions? Hmm. What are you, a machine or are you alive? Yes, I am alive. I am 74 years old and my name is Yvonne. She repeats passwords. Programming people are all paranoid. Hmm. Maybe I shouldn't say that. But where are you? How do you know where I am? I work as a repeater at the East Insel Indian Repeater Station. It's my job to know where you are for the accident. As for me, well, I am sitting in my cubicle, surrounded by a wall of radios. On an island on the River Esperance, a small woman, all skin and bones, sits in a room filled with audio equipment. Thousands of tiny lights are reflected back from her prescription lenses, like stars in the dark. Doesn't it get lonely, sitting there all by herself? Doesn't it get lonely, doing this job? Lonely? <laughs> why would it get lonely? I get to talk to people all day. That's why she does this. Now, please tell me if there's anything else I can do for Trace Accident. How sad. That's all for now. Thank you, and goodbye. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering. Print. Nothing happens. Fair enough. We'll come back to this another time. As tempting as those $50 are right now. Oh, let's go. Bro, we have so much morale. What in God's name? You see a terrifying ice beer with a strange compartment in its belly. The door is covered in frost and the beer's eyes are glowing red. What is this thing? It looks like a giant ice bear. The lieutenant doesn't answer. His eyes are glued to the animal. A sharp slice of light shines out from its mysterious belly door. Open the belly door. 
A gust of freezing cold air rushes to greet you. You hear a low grumble as the bear regulates itself. This is the inside of a refrigerator. The lieutenant takes a peek inside. His hand has found the holster of his gun. Look inside. The shelves are empty. All you see are crumpled ice cream wrappers with the brand name, Revachon Ice City. A handwritten note has been attached to the door. The fridge is huge. Take the note. You pocket the note and the little fridge magnets keeping it on the door. Examine one of the ice cream wrappers. A friendly cartoon bear smiles back at you from a glossy cellophane wrapper. It looks nothing like the fridge. The paper still smells of vanilla and chocolate. Why is there a giant bear-shaped fridge? What is, rather, a giant bear-shaped fridge doing in an abandoned cellar in the first place? Good question. It looks like an ice cream fridge. The lieutenant reaches for one of the wrappers. He studies it in the light. Somewhere in the past, it's summer. Five-year-old Fifette lets go of her mother's hand. Change jingling in her pockets as she hops towards the ice cream stand right across the plaza. So they tried to sell ice cream from this hyper-carnivore? I know. What an unfortunate marketing choice. What is even worse, the bear is still costing them money to this day. The lieutenant points to the red snaky cable running from the fridge. The fridge buzzes with energy. The electricity bill on this thing must be catastrophic. Hmm. So, first, we leveled up. Um... There's so many. Let's do a visual calculus, as that is currently at three. All right, that note. The note is written with a blue pencil on a piece of lined office paper. The kitchen magnets have left spots on its surface. Does it say anything interesting? The lieutenant leans closer to read the crumpled note over your shoulder. This is tangential at best, but the lieutenant's detective instinct is still active. Read the note. Someone has scribbled. S. I can't believe the off-site copy is still here. The illiterate ginger kid keeps stealing stuff from the studio, so I had to hide it somewhere mm, safe. I wonder who they could be talking about. You'll find the filament memory with the off-site copy in the frozen ice cream maker. Please take it home. ASAP. It's important. I'd do it myself if I lived in a civilized place with a freezer. Take care. Sully Swaff. Wonder who wrote this note? Looks like someone from that radio game company upstairs. I'm a little surprised they just left their property lying here. Maybe it's because of the entity. That's implausible. <laughs> What's a filament memory? It belongs inside a radio computer, storing its memory. It's like a tape. You listen to disco tapes, right? It's like one of your disco tapes. Only for a computer. Who's this illiterate ginger kid, I wonder? Really? You don't have a single guess? You mean Kuna? Oh, I'm sure that child would love to get his hands on the filament memory. Even if he doesn't know what to do with it, he'd probably try to pawn it for speed, based on our encounter. Do you have any idea where this frozen ice cream maker could be? I don't know. I assume it's somewhere close to the ice bear fridge. Hmm. That's a fair assumption. An ice cream maker, defrosted and unplugged. The flashlight casts a strange shadow. There's a hidden doorway here. Well, well, well. Two rusty rifles hidden above the piping. They look inoperable. Someone has stuck some busted guns beneath the ceiling. A few bricks have fallen off, revealing a compartment behind the wall. It's too dark to see in. Where are we? Seems like an old bunker from the revolutionary period. Look at all those rifles. Must be an old weapons cache. Look, there's a hole in the wall. There is, yes. And there also appears to be something inside the hole. Interesting. Do you want to take a look? Okay, I do. Your hand reaches deep into darkness and spider webs, rummaging around. You find rusty rifles hidden away. Rifles, Kim! Are these any good? Inspect the rifles. Most of them are rusty and inoperable, like the rest. But one catches your eye. A bolt action model with a fine woodstock, in better cosmetic order than the others. This one looks nice. That's a rare sight. 
seems to no longer be functional, but still a beautiful thing in its own way. Mm. Could the murder weapon we're looking for be similar? It's the same type of weapon, yes, a breech loader. An interesting coincidence that we should find something so similar. But I'm afraid our search for the real murder weapon must continue. What does this mean, a rifle here? It means there are firearms, albeit inoperable, still lying around in Martinez. It's an interesting coincidence, I would say. Might come in useful in the future. He likes this find. Leave. Would the rifle be worth money? Ooh, eleven dollars. Delightful. Hmm. Oh, an exit. Frozen ice cream maker that's still running. We found it. This orange machine is buzzing like an old submarine. It has a hand-cranked ice cream churner on top and an electric freezer. Open the lid. to be frozen shut. Open the lid. You slip your fingers under the frozen lid, but the ice is too cold for you to get a good grip. A pry bar would come in handy here. If you want to try again, then you need to... Equip and, the it, yes, I am aware. Thank you. Uh, pry bar. Get prying. This orange machine is buzzing like an old submarine. Not strong it enough. Fuck. A ice cream churner on top and an electric freezer that appears to be frozen. Well, let's try. The ice squeaks beneath the pry bar. You think you've got the bar jammed in there pretty well, but the lid simply won't budge. What is this? You see the pry bar's metal handle bending right before your very eyes. Yeah, well, that's a good pry bar. I'm not criticizing it, but this ice cream maker is frozen shut. It takes an advance to, to get it open. I'm not. I would hope you aren't criticizing it, given I, this is your pry bar. <laughs> advance. Where do we get one? I have no idea, officer. This ice cream maker isn't important enough to requisition a special tool. Says who, Kim? Sooner or later, you will stumble upon a tool mighty enough. Then we will know what's in this mysterious ice cream maker. Well, we already know, but I still want to see regardless. Oh yeah, let's go. Two cables are plugged into the breaker box. The red one leads to the ice bear fridge, and the black one to the ice cream maker nearby. Unplug. An electric sizzle. The room is slightly quieter now. Unplug. Something close to you dies with a soft electric purr. Why did you do that? Because it's black, the color of immeasurable cosmos. The lieutenant raises his brows, but doesn't say anything. The electric distribution board now has one cable missing. I mean, you know. Oh, fuck. Ooh, wait. Insane mesh tank top? What do you mean? Plus one drama. I, you know, it's really the name that's winning me over on that one. Intercom wire is running into the breaker box. Oh, let's go. I need to re-equip the flashlight. Uh... A cellar window. People's feet shuffling by on the street. And here? A thick layer of coal dust covers the furnace, coloring it pitch black. Looks like this furnace has a face, and it's a face of agony. Kim, what is this thing? Is it a furnace? Looks like it. Looks like an old central furnace used to heat the building. It's connected to the chimney. No one has used it in ages. No signs of any recent fire. Only dead rats. Look inside. It's dark and grimy here. In the darkness you can hear chatter. It's coming from above. A voice or several voices talking to each other. Near the smoke chamber, upstairs, the echo is so prominent, it's impossible to discern what the voices are saying or what's producing them. What are you doing? I'm hallucinating? Maybe, or maybe it's the entity. Wait, really? Take your head out of the chimney, please. It's not safe. Hello! Something breaks loose in you. A mighty bellow echoes throughout the chimney's depths. The chatter of tiny voices above suddenly cease. Then, 
Hello. Oh. You've awakened the entity. Hmm. I summon the ghost of this doomed commercial area. Answer me, spirit. Hello? Did you say anything? I can't hear you. Please come upstairs. There's a safety curtain on the second floor. I'll open it. You hear a low rumble upstairs. The sound of a curtain being pulled aside. Excellent. After you, officer. Smear your hands. A lush layer of coal now covers your skin, sinking into the wrinkles. Your hands look ancient. You feel the spirit of Ramut Karzai, ancient hero of Grad, pulsing through you. All that's left is to cover your face in war paint. So true. Hadramut Karzai, smear your cheeks black with coal. Three dangerous stripes appear onto your cheeks, telling stories of your wild soul. What? What are you doing? I am the reincarnation of an ancient Imaran warrior. Please wipe your face clean, officer. No, you're a proud warrior. Keep it. Wipe it clean. Thank you. So, where were we? These voices I heard. Maybe it's the malignant entity. Palis... Plis... Plisance? I, f I don't know. Said it lives in a chimney. You're right. The rooms do look like they're connected. But malignant entities don't exist. At least not the supernatural kind. Kick it. A hollow ring echoes through the furnace. Fair. Your toe hurts. Wait, did that do two damage? <laughs> God damn, okay. The wall collapsed. It's inaccessible now. <laughs> I kind of expected it to hurt, but I didn't think I would, you know, take that much damage. Right, where is the safety curtain that you moved? Was there Oh, there's a staircase here. I'm an idiot. Shoes in a puddle of melting snow. The floorboards creak. Excellent. Hmm. Strays full of dice. Colorful polyhedral dice. Hundreds of them. The candy dispenser has been repurposed to contain thousands of dice. I see. Hello, I'm Nia. A bird-like woman sits on a throne of tools with emerald light shining through her hair. Did you try knocking on my window? I must have missed you. I've been listening to my Milius. She taps on her headphones. So what kind of die are you looking for? Could this be the malicious entity? Perhaps it's wise to go along with this masquerade. For now. Excellent suggestion, Inland Empire. She's got a direct view to the backyard. You should interrogate her about the lynching. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by Milius? Yes, a Milius is like a call-in station. You need a two-way radio to access one. That's why I have these. Mostly, they just teach you to swear in different languages. But some of the stations can be quite interesting. I was so absorbed, I must have missed you knocking. You must have me confused with someone else. I haven't knocked on your window. Then how did you get inside? By the south entrance? You know what? It doesn't even matter. What matters is that you're finally here. Let's talk dice. Did you have something specific in mind? Why are you asking me about dice? I'm a novelty dice maker. Tell me the name of your role-playing system and I'll make the die you need. That's why you're here, yes? Role-playing games? You know the one made by Fortress Accident. Does that count? This is pretty much the last thing I expected to find in here. Who would have known the malignant entity would have such a strange hobby? I would, yeah, sure, I like role-playing games and I need some dice. Very good. My rate is 10 real per set. Unless you want something really unusual. Take a look around and see if there is any particular stone you want to use. The walls around her are covered with rows of precious stones and minerals. It almost looks as if the stones and dice are a natural part of the room, growing out of the shells like stalagmites. This person means you, or no one else, absolutely no harm. She will answer freely and honestly. No falsehoods are present. She's a novelty dice maker and doesn't have anything to hide. Ask what you need. I'd like to order a die. Of course. Tell me what you have in mind. T 
tell me about your most extraordinary die. A star that fell from the firmament? Those cost more than seven real. Are you sure? Yes, I'm a star myself, a superstar, and superstars don't care about money. Yes, you definitely have the proper attitude. How about a pair of 100-sided dice Ooh. made of ivory and inlaid with lodestone, a naturally occurring magnet to complement your magnetic personality? Perfect. 10 real, and I can get these ready in 8 hours. Do electromagnetic die even roll properly? It's true. Magnetic dies are definitely different. When rolled together, the magnetic fields of the pips interact with each other to push and pull on each other as they're rolled, just like all magnetic personalities do. It's a deal. Great. See you in eight hours then. Was there anything else? How did you become a dice maker? How did I become one? It was a business decision. I was a regular jeweler at first, but that's an unfocused field with too much competition. Some of my friends were role players. They asked me to make some polyhedral dice out of cobalt. That was my first order. I grew it from there. Do you like role-playing games yourself? Not especially. I like working with rare materials and a steady pay. And role players as customers? They're nice people. She's thankful for the security they provide her. Hmm. Well, do you know who was, was about the man who was lynched in the Whirling in Rags? Nothing really. I didn't know him. Who cares about a dead body? We might be dealing with a malignant entity here. Hmm. The lieutenant looks at his notebook. Then, the woman under the large window. Your window looks directly onto the courtyard. You're saying you didn't see or hear anything unusual last Sunday evening? I'm sorry, detective, but as you know, I usually have my headphones on when I'm working. It shuts out most of the daily ruckus behind my window. What do you mean by daily ruckus? Well, there's always something going on in the whirling's backyard. She stops to try and come up with an example. During daytime, there are usually those kids. And lately, I've been seeing a lot of drunk workers hanging about. Must be because of the strike. She's heard of the murder, but did not see it, sire. She's not sorry to disappoint you. Informing on someone in a murder investigation would intrude upon her focused existence. But I never saw anyone during that fateful Sunday night, I'm afraid. And you never took your eyes off the, off, off the work to look outside the window? I might have, but in this case, all I would have seen is my own reflection staring back from the darkness. It's really hard to make anything out in the yard when it's dark outside. Besides, I rarely get up to look out the window when I'm in the zone. Do you often work Sunday nights? It's an odd profession. Making dice for people. But I like it. And I prefer doing this to sitting at home. I say thank you for your answers. She nods. Anything else, officer? Hey, where are we anyway? What is this place? We're inside the chimney of an old central furnace. It's strange, I know. Oh. She looks at the ruddy bricks that make up the walls. Even though they've been repainted, there are still signs of cold black soot hit here and there. But when I arrived here, all the other rooms were taken. So I had to build myself a makeshift home. Besides, I don't really have to pay any rent here, so that's a plus. Placence was right. There's an entity living in the chimney. You should ask her about the curse. Create here. The lieutenant looks about the spacious room, its ceiling fading into the shadows above. When she arrived here, there was no room anywhere else. She must have known the other businesses. I've heard this place is cursed. Did you know that people call it the doomed commercial area? I've heard the stories, but I don't think those stories are true. Wait, how do you explain all that? what happened to all these companies then? It's just capitalism. We only hear about tales of success, so it's often surprising to realize how many ventures actually fail. Extremely true. Plaisance is the one who sent me. She's convinced that the place is swarming with malicious energies. Plaisance, the bookshop lady? I've heard that her business is doing rather well. Have the energies spared her somehow? Actually, the bookstore isn't going, isn't doing that well. There are hardly any customers, and she has to exploit her own daughter to keep the company going. All oh, right, but it's not just the bookstore that's still up and running. What about the whirling in racks? Hold on. People say it's part of the building complex. Hold on, the whirling is part of the doomed commercial area? You could say so. 
Both houses were built at the same time and under the east of the Kumar Central project. No, the whirling... Uh, well, no, that's not right. Hmm. You're right, the whirling doesn't really look like it's cursed. And then there is me. <sighs> she sighs, looking at her messy work table. All kinds of tools lay there scattered, from knives to carving files to wire cutters. I've been here for 14 years. Holy shit. Selling novelty dice to role-playing enthusiasts. Not exactly a million real business idea. Yet somehow, I've survived despite the talk of malicious energies. Strange, isn't it? Maybe it's just because she's so talented that she's been able to woo the curse. Hmm. I'll be first to admit there are many inconsistencies in this so-called curse. I was just about to ask, what do you think? Do you think the curse is real? Time has come to face the source. Fear not, for the forces of the universe are supporting you in this psychic quest. I'm starting to see there is no curse, only business decisions and natural market fluctuations. Exactly. Truth is always so disappointingly mundane and boring. I am immensely disappointed, I won't lie. But I'm glad we got this sorted out. Anything else I can help you with today? That's all she has to say on the subject. She's been thorough and truthful, as far as we could see. Blaisons is not going to like what you have to tell her. Do you know what the other what happened to the other tenants? Everyone else is gone. More or less. Are you interested in anyone specific? Oh, quite a lot of them spring to mind. Rats scuttle in the dark rooms under the abandoned blow dryers and dusty mannequins. Cobwebs cover rotors and radio computers alike. So much failure. There used to be a hair salon here, right? Yes, I think it was called Androgynous Orlando or something similar. They weren't a big hit around here. Turns out that working class men don't like genderless haircuts. They're scared of that word. So true, so true. A bit of experimenting every now and then isn't bad. It's not about the haircut. It's about the confidence. Hmm. What's wrong with a bit of experimenting? The customer should be have been more open-minded. I guess it just wasn't the time yet. Hmm. What happened to the gym? It wasn't merely a gym. It was Artemiteps Boxing Club, a community project created to steer at-risk youths away from drugs and crime. And who was Artemip? A kind man from Zemsk. I heard he had some trouble with the law when he was younger, and that's why he wanted to start the gym. As his way of giving back. Maybe that's what Kuno needs. A community-centric boxing club. Hmm. Kuno. Who's Kuno? He's a little ginger gremlin who likes to defile dead bodies. Oh, yes. You mean the kid with the sailor's mouth? Yes. I've heard him yelling profanities in the backyard. I think it would take more than a gym to help that kid. Hmm. Judging by the kids I've met so far, it didn't really work, did it? It didn't. If anything, it made the youth situation in Martinez even worse. At some point, someone started a rumor that the punching bag downstairs was full of amphetamines. The place didn't look nearly cool enough to be like that. It's not really full of that. No one would store their drugs like that. Eventually, the coalition took away the funding and the club went bankrupt. This was a few years ago. It's gotten much more peaceful around the plaza ever since. What's up with the broken windows? Oh, this one's a mess. <sighs> there used to be a company that promised to repair windows 24 hours a day. What could go wrong with this one, right? Turns out, the business was actually set up as a front for an illicit group that was producing snuff medias. Who would have guessed? Excuse me? And they never cleaned up the debris either. Now it's just littering the hallway and I have no idea how to get rid of it on my own. Cool, very cool about the debris. But what's a snuff milio? It's a sub rosa radio station that broadcasts real murders with real victims. Some people pay good money to get off on it. That is what I expected you to say. Nothing changes in her tone as she says that. As if it's just another piece of information 
to lay out for the world. Don't worry, the ICP has a separate division that deals exclusively with unlicensed sub -roses. This isn't our problem. Good luck with that. It's not easy catching those perpetrators. Hmm. Did someone here make stuffed animals? I saw mounts laying around. You mean Mr. Fabron, the taxidermist? No, he mostly just did drugs. Hmm. Very cool, very cool. Anything else? I found creepy mannequins. There used to be a fashion atelier here, but I have forgotten the head designer's name. They were doing well for a couple of years, until the insect rights activists came. I didn't know insects had any rights or activists. Yeah, the atelier didn't know it either. They produced a certain collection that used chitin among the materials. Apparently chitin is made in the occident, where it's extracted from beetle wings. And you know how all kinds of political movements are big in the occident. The activists shut down the biggest chitin supplier, which of course caused the price to skyrocket. Ugh, yet another thing that wokeness ruined. And, naturally, all the most fashionable pacemakers refused to be seen in chitin from then on. The atelier went bankrupt before they could finish the collection. I mostly just want to know what they looked like, to be honest with you. But insects don't have any brains or feelings. Actually, insects do have brains. But yes, I understand what you're saying. I think the protesters took it a little too far. As she shifts around, you notice several dead flies on the windowsill in front of her. Legs up. They're not moving. Anything else? What's with the rotor blades and skis? They were made by a company called Slipstream. After they pivoted from making rotor blades to skis, their chief executive took off on a vacation with all their money. She rests her chin on her hand with an impish smile. Honestly, I think it's quite funny. I think he's still sending out holiday transmissions from Tulula or Tiumotiri or Hashtkor or wherever he is. Interesting, what do these transmissions say? The usual, I imagine. That he's been thinking up all kinds of new business plans and can't wait to get started on them just as soon as he returns. Her smile widens before she sees the lieutenant's face behind you. Men like that are a curse. Sure, but Slipstream is history now. All their remaining assets got seized by the bailiffs in 47. I have no idea why those skis and blades are still lying around in the house. Not much use now, I guess. They were just the props. Why return them? I found a strange machine. Fortress Accident, the radio game studio. She closes her eyes as some remnant of a memory lights up her face. She liked them. They were an interesting bunch. We talked about role-playing systems every now and then. Once, I even saw two of them get into fisticuffs over Wiro. Hmm. That's understandable. Fantasies are serious things. The mind is the drawing board of history. So true. They certainly took their work very seriously, even if they seem to be chronically liberal with their schedules. What do you mean liberal? What happened? The usual. They ran out of money and couldn't get the project done on time. What went wrong? Well, I did hear them talking at times. She looks at the hallway, as if she can still hear them chit-chat behind her curtain on a cigarette break. They seemed to believe they were historical individuals on some grand quest. She sounds almost mocking when she says that. From what I've seen so far, the project did look quite impressive. Yes, but when the money started to run out, they just began to complain a lot about capitalism. You know, how the markets are rigged to keep out new businesses and so on. In the end, they just didn't get it done. They didn't have enough willpower to produce something truly historic and to show up to work on time. The story about the game we're currently playing was that they'd tried to do something with Elysium before a few times and failed <laughs> every time. So I kind of get the vibe that they were thinking of themselves when they designed this particular company. <laughs> hmm. That's too bad. I would have supported them. The project looked great. Not the wisest decision. You would have lost all your savings. She tosses a pair of dice on the table. One of them stops near the edge of the metallic desk. The result is one. 
on a 20-sided die. The dice is black and filled with little silvery flakes like snowfall. Anything else? There was a terrifying taxidermied bear in the cellar. Oh boy, the fabled Reva show, ICT. You're in for a treat here. She smiles and leans closer, hands on her knees, like a stand-up comedian ready to tell a story. The place was owned by two guys who had some rather innovative ideas about marketing. The bear was one of them. Now ask me about their other ideas. Indeed. What were the other ideas? Alright, what, what about the other ideas? There was really just one. And it involved picking out the prettiest girls in the neighborhood and paying them 20 cents per hour to man the booth. This sounds like a bit of a swizz. And by man the booth, I mean slump behind the counter with a face that could maim you if you ever dared to disturb their bored magazine browsing. Sounds like she really didn't like those girls. Fritter does the same thing. I know a girl just like that. She works in Freet as a cashier and she's not particularly friendly. Employing soaky teenage girls is a widespread practice, yes. Unfortunately, they always come in packs. Oh. I'm talking about acne-ridden girlfriends and gorilla-like boyfriends loitering near the shop. At least that's what happened with Ravishow ICT. And they already had the bear. She closes her eyes as if remembering something painful. What about the bear? The bear. She repeats, pressing thumbs into her temples like trying to suppress a headache. Didn't work out? Of course not. The bear was terrifying. No one wants ice cream guarded by a hostile apex predator. To make matters worse, the fridge didn't work too well either, and half the ice cream came out malformed and partially melted. Eventually, Ravisho Ice City lost the price war to its rival, Glass A 5000. Glass A 5000 saw caramel sundaes for only 5 cents a piece, out of regular fridges. Fuck. There's so many good options here. I killed the bear, but also, I'm sure the bear was doing its best. Maybe, because the taxidermist who made that bear definitely wasn't. Doing his best, I mean. How come? He said that the bear was his vision beast. He said he met his vision beast while high on desiccants. Called it Megatherian. Hmm. Sounds cool. True. Megatherian? Megatherian. A mega wild beast. What's a mega wild beast? It's an imaginary beast that guides you through life by telling you to do more drugs, mostly. I do drugs. I've got a vision beast myself. Do you? Well, good luck keeping it under control. Anyway, now you know the story of the fallen ice cream empire. She almost seems sad finishing the story. Some dust beams swirl in the morning light. Her eyes follow it idly. It's all sparkling embers under the window. Outside it's light. Light scatters from the low hanging cloud cover. There's always the threat of snow. Anything else? Another I've... failed business, perhaps? I've been here for a long time. I found the building's intercom, but it's not working. Oh, right. I hope you didn't try to ring me. I think none of those doorbells work, including mine. I'm still in the middle of connecting the wires. Sorry about the confusion. The doorbell with the empty name card must belong to her, then. So you're telling me the doorbell with the empty, card, empty name card was yours? That's right. I haven't even written my name there. As I said, it's quite useless right now. It doesn't work yet. I was wondering about the whirling in rags. Is it part of the same building complex? You could say so. Both houses were built at the same time and under the East Delta Commerce Center project. That explains why you can call the whirling from the intercom. Albeit, I doubt that anyone responds. If the whirling is part of the same building, then it's part of the Doom commercial area. The darkness of this place is there, too. I saw a name East Delta Pinball on the doorbell. Right. It used to be a gaming arcade. This is an ancient failure. Before my time. I'm not surprised, however. My advice? Don't base your business on a fad. Hypnotism, floreography, trick track, especially pinball. Agreed. Pinball is the worst. Why? What is wrong? Why are you all hating? His disdain for pinball could not be clearer. Kim? 
Would you like to talk about it? What's your problem? A strange thing happening what happened when I tried calling a company named Slipstream, SCA. Someone answered. It can't be true. They don't work here anymore. They've been gone for years. Are you sure it was Slipstream, SCA? Was it a woman? Maybe it was Plaisance from the bookstore. She said she was from Tricentennial Electrics. Tricentennial Electrics? There's a moment before she recognizes the name. It used to be a major electric company 100 years ago. Are you sure it wasn't just some kids playing a prank on you? No, it was something else. It was eerie. It was too real to be just a prank. Either we're dealing with a professional actress or whatever happened, keep your cool. It's probably better to admit that it was a harmless prank. No, it was something else. Something eerie. Pranks can be eerie. She looks as if she's still convinced there's nothing to be worried about. Oh, the kids these days. We were just one of them, and now they're terrorizing us. No solidarity. Actually, the Slipstream SCA mystery might be a recording. I called again later and got the exact same message. Why would Slipstream SCA have a hundred-year-old recording as their doorbell message? Doesn't make any sense. I'm still convinced it was nothing more than some elaborate prank. My money is on electrical anomaly. I've heard of these, especially in an old building like this. I have a few more questions about the building. Sure, I'm listening. Actually, I had other questions. Good. I hope it clarified things a bit. What else? Why hasn't her business failed? A gust of cold air sweeps through the chimney. The stones and minerals on the shelves rattle as though agitated. For a moment, it almost feels as though you're outside the building, exposed to the atmosphere. This is just a theory, but hear me out. I think I know why your business hasn't failed. Didn't we already talk about this? She asks as the wind continues to seep in through the cracks in the old chimney. It's because you're not in the same building as the others. This isn't technically the doomed commercial area. What are you talking about? My address is exactly the same. Rue de Sanguelan 10. No, the old coal plant that used to be here was subsumed into the new venture. Its ruins swallowed up, yet it has a different address in the heart of the city. Who am I to argue with Shivers, who seems to know of everything happening in the city? No, this used to be a coal plant, touch the safety curtain. You're in the chimney of another building. This doesn't make any sense. She looks around the makeshift nest that she has carved out for herself, bewildered. Are you saying my business was spared because of a technicality? Where is this coming from? It has a different address in the heart of the city. And what? Does it mean that I'm safe from failure? Don't let her become complacent. She still needs to ward her soul against the evil forces so true actually it's only your workshop that's protected you should still do something to defend your person she starts laughing her fingers trying to rub away the exhaustion from her face what do you know what this is she raises her hand to reveal a piece of metal shining on her index finger lucky charm a seminese ward it's a morning ring i made this when my first company failed it was a small jewelry shop right here in the East Delta Commerce Center, built with the little I inherited from my parents. I drove it into the ground within a year. I didn't have what you would call a viable business plan. See? The curse is real! I bet you didn't run this little jewelry shop from the protective depths of the chimney. No, you're right. I didn't. <laughs> she laughs again but it sounds rather small and sad it wasn't just a jewelry shop either i always thought that it was just the world that you were supposed to try again and again until you finally succeed and now you're telling me what that it was all because i didn't run my little shops and ventures from a dump inside an abandoned chimney don't call it a dump you've made it nice and cozy here yeah or maybe it's the entire world that's cursed it's such a precarious place Nothing ever works out the way you want it. True, but can you please stop be making me sad? That's why people like role-playing games. You can be whoever you want to be, you can try again. Still, 
There is something inherently violent even about dice rolls. You had me all the way up until that last part. It's like every time you cast a die, something disappears. Some alternative ending or an entirely different world. She picks up a pair of dice from the table and examines them under the light. But Ooh. anyway, thanks for sharing your theories, officer. Hmm. I'm glad I waited to use that skill point. Seems like the point of this game is victory. The absence of defeat on all fronts. Victory in business ventures and creative undertakings. Victories in love and over other people. Political victory. Ideological victory. Hell, even sexual victory. Definitely a lot of object-based victories, too. Spud, please. Having, thing, having things and not losing them. One problem, though. Not a lot of victories in sight. Everyone's mostly losing. Why is that? And how do you not lose? That's an excellent question. I would like to internalize the precarious world. Tremendous. We've confirmed that the curse was real the whole time. Let's go inform the, the, the lady. 